This is my first game post patch of Madden 24. They just dropped a massive patch. Wanted to drop a little gameplay for you guys just to kind of go through some things in terms of the updates. Haven't done a lot of game plans on the channel before, but I do want to do one for you guys. Uh, in terms of uh, my ultimate team here, I've got 50 out of 50, zero chill. Uh, just want to talk about abilities real quick. The abilities that I'm rocking is I am rocking. Oh, it's only 7 AP here. That's kind of interesting. That's actually shocking. Um, the abilities that I'm rocking is Slot Apprentice. Uh, tight end apprentice and set feet leap. Obviously, this is going to go up to five AP, but these hopefully will stay the same, and that will give me my eight out of eight AP defense so far. Same AP. I don't know why I didn't know that. I thought it was updated, but I guess it's not. I guess it's coming later today. Anyways, um, you know, basically standard. Uh, I'm rocking deep out zone KO, mid zone KO on my outside corner here. Rocking in deep out zone KO here, and then um, basically deep end zone KO on both of my safeties, and then uh, for playbooks and all that fun stuff. I am rocking the Bears offensive playbook and the multiple defense playbook. Going to be running some bunch strong offset today and uh, just wanted to mess around with the Bears. So let's go ahead and get in the game. All right, guys, wanted to get in the game as fast as possible for you guys. This is literally the first thing that I'm doing on the on the new patch. And we're just going to be going in here and we're going to be running uh, the dollar defense because supposedly this was patched. I do think they did try to patch it. I don't think that it was actually patched. We actually updated our Patreon uh, this morning as well with the new way to run it. So we're going to be testing that out in this gameplay. And if you guys want to get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks, that's going to be linked down in the description below. Being a Patreon member will get you access to all of that. Uh, real quick, just going to go ahead and sub my players in and then we'll get into kind of the gameplay portion of this. If you guys didn't know, make sure that you're pausing this and you'll see that my uh, little pick a play menu thing is going to reset. I got a couple new blitzes post patch. I got some new things I'm doing. So hopefully uh, we're going to be testing it out in this gameplay for you guys. And then um, I'm in the multiple defense playbook, as I said. Okay. All right. So first out, we're just going to send four and try to see if we can get this pressure in. Maybe he'll run the ball. Yeah, I figured he would. Okay. Um, so we're just kind of testing the gameplay portion of the patch. Uh, obviously, you know, they tried to uh, patch some stuff, so hopefully uh, we can still play good defense there. I totally did not get my setup in. It's going to run some random stuff. So, again, the main thing I want to look at here is the pressure. Uh, can we get the blitz to Can we get the blitz to scream? Uh, that's the most important thing in any defense. So, let's see if we can get this blitz. So, I'm just really kind of making the setup for the blitz other than that i'm not too worried about the coverage aspect obviously this guy he, i don't know what he's doing uh, offensively but he's really not doing much to make us respect anything so there you see there's your four man a gap still works 100 percent. if you want the new way to set that up that's in the patreon as you saw the pressure came in i had terrible coverage behind it but again i'm just kind of mainly looking at the pressure it's going to take me some time to uh, get my adjustments down now that we have um, a new way to run the blitz this is kind of my favorite run defense on the game here just simple DB Fire 2. I think this is the new... Um, I actually have a new way to run DB Fire 2 as well. Of course, as I say, it's my favorite running fence. I get absolutely toted on. I literally, This is why I don't like doing gameplay videos because I always play people like this. I, I never play someone that's just running like, like standard stuff. I always play someone that's out here and I form tight. We're hitting me with the PA Power O, getting the high-low read over there on the corner. Like It just blows me away like what people run, and it's actually hard to stop. Um, you know, you're like, well, get out of dollar. Well, there's, you know, dollar actually is probably the best chance you have at stopping I form tight outside a goal line. Um, so anyways, all that fun stuff, but let's get, let's get it here. All right. We actually have a chance to stop and let's see if we can do something here. So a nice little defense. You see, there's your four man pressure right up the a gap, easy heat. Perfect. 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 And, 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 and then look at this, look at this. Where's my players? Like he has, a, he's subbing out all my players. He's got glitches. This guy's crazy, man. Just money seven hundred two. He's just different. All right, let's see if we can get this. We're actually going to stay in cover two here, um, just kind of the way he's playing. Now, the one thing I will say that is different about the blitz post patch is the, um, the one thing that I think is the most significant difference about the uh, the dollar blitz post patch play action. I think blocks it a lot better than it used to. Oh, he's going to throw. I knew it, too. I was trying to run back, and then I was like, eh, maybe we can get... Eh, it's just bad. Man, 24, man. You just give up points to anybody in this game. But first takeaway out of this is that the blitz, the blitzing aspect of the dollar defense works with what we labbed up. So super, super proud of that. If you guys, again, if you guys want to get the updated version of the ebook, it's it's on the Patreon. I'm going to have to figure out how to stop Just Money 702, but... The foundation of every single good defense in Madden historically has always been to some type of 
ability to get pressure. Okay. Uh, it, 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 unless you have like, there are years where the sheds are just really, really good. And you can actually run um, a shed defense with a three man pass rush. But outside of that, Pretty much unanimously, it always is some type of send four, send five, or even a send six pressure. But you have to have the ability to be able to get pressure. If you don't have that ability, uh, you're 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 just not going to be very good defensively. So uh, let's see if this uh, concept works. And the other, the only other, the other thing I want to talk about a little bit that I wish they would have patched. And this is just me, and I don't think they can patch it, but it drives me insane. The randomness of the bumping in this game blows me away and it has blown me away for years they literally just like that that corner route would have been open but because he bumped him like that he just bagged it just completely bagged it so i just think that's silly well double corner concept this is the best passing concept in madden like i said i'm rocking the bears playbook i, I actually think i'm gonna drop a bears ebook i was gonna drop a or just update the jets ebook but i think i'm gonna drop a, an entire bears ebook because it, it allows me to update uh, some stuff I've been doing differently out of tight slots. And then they also have some other formations that a lot of people are kind of, I wish I could snap the ball, uh, that a lot of people are kind of sleeping on. They have um, this little Y off trips formation is pretty glitchy. They have uh, tight Y off, normal Y off close. Those two formations, I think, are some of the most underrated formations in the game. So there's a lot you can do out of the Bears playbook this year. A lot of people are, um, and this is the Bears live playbook that we're utilizing here today. But you could run uh, all of your bunch strong offset off of um, out of jets as well if you wanted to. So see here, he doesn't get bumped, and I can actually throw the pass. So there it is. So what I like to do, uh, another thing that I've been kind of tinkering with a little bit is understanding some of the stuff I wanted to do in updates. And thanks for you guys as far as like just trying to help people get better, help myself get better as well, is understand like why why you call – Let's see if I can fit this in. Eh, of course I can't. Dude, these like stocks, dude, these players that just, oh, and he's going to get a touchdown. This is why, this is literally why I don't play regs or play, do game plays. <laughs> I just played like just money 702 has a glitch. Oh, that was on me though. I just didn't expect the hook curl to drop back 30 yards. So one of the things uh, that I was going to say is about offense before I threw that really bad interception is one of the things I'm trying to do a better job of is be a little bit more systematic offensively and actually have like this, 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 and that, and they do this versus this, this, and that, right? So essentially what I'm, what I'm getting at, if you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about what I've been doing uh, with, with weightlifting uh, to try to help kind of explain this concept. So with weightlifting, I'm doing a program called Starting Strength. I don't know if any of you guys ever heard of it. It's really a neat program. Basically, the whole idea is that you're wanting to try to systematically get as strong as you possibly can. And so because of that, they've structured an entire program around that. And essentially, the way that you do that is you do the main three lifts as, as well as the overhead press. So the main three lifts being the bench press, the – look at these sheds. Bro, I'm going to win this game. I'm going to win this game, I promise you. I just, I, just, I just can't stand stuff like that, guys. It just, I have iron wall on, on my O-line so that I don't get shedded. I have the best offensive lineman, and I get shedded. It just, it just blows me away. And, and this guy's team, you know what? I don't know if we can pause. I don't have a pause. I'll do it in the second half. We'll look at this guy's ratings, and he's just shedding my life away. Um, but anyway, uh, like I said, I was doing, I'm doing a program uh, called Starting Strength. And basically the, the whole idea um, is to get as strong as possible using the big, the big three lifts, okay? Uh, and then as well as the overhead press, you pretty much alternate the overhead press and the – um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the, the bench press, right? As you see there, blocked running back still comes in. It's the best blitz in the game, guys. Um, sorry. Sometimes you get caught trying to think here. So anyways, we're doing this program and the biggest thing uh, with it is you want to, they, they, they basically say this and this is kind of like the defining thing of the program as we're, as we're just taking three here in Madden 24. 
you want to train, you don't want to exercise. So what a lot of people do is they exercise. Essentially what exercise is, is you do a lot of different activities. You do a lot of activity, but you don't really know the result that it gives you. Okay. So you go to the gym, you walk on the treadmill, you do a bunch of machines and they, they make you feel better. Right. And they may actually give you some strength, but they don't, they, they don't really systematically make you stronger. Okay. That's, that's kind of the basic idea of their argument. They don't systematically really do anything for you outside of maybe improve your, you know, cardiovascular health or uh, maybe just make you feel better about what you've done. So their approach is let's try to do some stuff that's going to systematically make you stronger. And they will charge you an arm and a leg to do that, which is why they have to be really good at that. Right. So anyways, I've been doing that for the last great little free form there. Um, I've been doing that for the last six months. And since I started, I started, I think my squat, I think my squat was literally, um, I'm trying to remember what I started out with. I literally, literally think I just started with the bar. So 45 pounds on the squat, my deadlift, I'm pretty sure I was able to pull 135 the first time I tried it. The bench press, I think I got 135 as well. And then the overhead press was pretty bad. It was like, I think it was like in the 50, I don't even know, like, let's say 65 pounds. So pretty, pretty basic, like starting numbers, nothing really powerful or, you know, nothing really, really to write home about. And, and I haven't really lifted, um, intentionally lifted, I would say since I was in high school. Okay. So with that being said, um, now after, and, and basically the way that you systematically progress, wanted to back up and say that. So the way that you systematically progress in their program is you add five pounds pretty much every single time. So you're trying to add five pounds every single time until you can't add five pounds anymore. And then they typically will transition you to maybe trying to add five pounds a week, right? Um, and so that's kind of the basics of the gist of the program. There's videos on it. You can, you know, you YouTube it or whatever. But anyways, so that with that in mind, um, that is kind of, that's kind of what I've been doing. So in in the early December uh, was kind of when I reached my point. I got super sick in December, and so I've just been kind of getting back into it. I'm going to go later today, but basically, here's my numbers. So I went from 135 on the deadlift to 435 on the deadlift, and I do all these for five repetitions. So it's not just like a PR of one pull. It's we're actually using a five rep repetition progression and cadence to try to again drive at getting stronger as the primary goal. Okay. So, um, I did five, uh, one, four, 435 pounds for five repetitions on the deadlift for the bench press. I've done uh, 255. I want to say for five repetitions, I have done like a, I think I have done like an actual one rep, but I, I, the, the most I've ever got on the bench press is I think 275, but I'm progressing pretty well and hopefully be able to pass that soon. So anyways, that's my bench press. And then my overhead press actually probably the one that I think I'm the best at, um, is my overhead press has went from, like I said, you know, 55, 65 pounds to 185 pounds. And then my, what else was I going to say on that? Um, my, uh, squat. Oh yeah. My squat. So like I said, uh, first couple, I, I don't think, I, I think it was like 45, uh, for five. And then I, I don't even know what I did, but it was like 45 or 55 pounds. It was not very much weight that I could do on the squat. I had, and then squat was my least favorite, uh, exercise ever. Okay. So I was able to, uh, I am able now to squat 365 pounds for five repetitions, which is uh, pretty decent. And so the point of all that is to say there was a systematic plan in which I made a, a, a logical progression that actually made sense to me. Right. And, and it worked. So that's kind of what I've been up to strength training wise. And I thought, well, how would we apply the principles of strength training to Madden. And I think the way that you apply this is most people, when they play Madden, they don't really have like an actual system. They have a couple money plays. They have a couple of routes, but they don't have like a legitimate, like I'm going to do this versus this. And then they're going to, that means that they're going to have to do this and this to stop me. And then I'm going to then be able to, um, you know, basically manipulate that and take advantage of that. So that's kind of the, some of the things that I'm working on in Madden. For example, um, you know, golly, this, this dude is him. <laughs> I don't get this. The blitz is actually going crazy and I can't get a stop. All right. We're just going to play. Um, we're just going to shade out shade underneath and just see if we can jump, jump something underneath. I'm tired of him being able to 
bro, this guy is just, dude, this guy is just different, bro. This is so bad, bro. And um, so this guy's a great example of like, and he's obviously winning the game, so I gotta, I'm not going to like bash him. But he's winning the game, but he really doesn't know why he's winning the game. And he's calling the most random, random stuff. Like, it's just truly random stuff. There's no actual plan. Give me that. Um, there's no actual plan behind it. Like, it's just cycling through random plays. And I think that is one of the things that I uh, tend to struggle with as well. And I really think that's one of the things that hold people back in Madden is they don't actually, like, have a legitimate, like, what's your actual plan? Not what are your plays, but what are your actual, what's your actual plan um, for what you're trying to accomplish? And how do you adapt that plan based off of, you know, who you're playing? Um, those kind of questions is, is kind of some of the questions that I've, I've been uh, starting to ask. So foundationally for any good, and, and, and this kind of goes to some of the principles that I've uh, talked about before with the power play, counter play, constraint play, offensive theory. Um, and, and, and I'm trying to find a way to apply this to defense. Defense is a little harder because you are inherently trying to adapt and adjust your base defense to what they're actually doing and what their tendencies are. And there's a lot, there's a lot to think about. I think defensively a lot more than, um, than, than I think than, than I even know. Right. So with that in mind, um, I've been trying to figure out a way to actually have a logical program. Like for example, uh, one of the things like an, uh, a progression cadence. So in, uh, boxing, they use this phrase kind of jab, 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 right hook, right? So we're going to, you know, maybe it's like coverage, 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 blitz, or power play, power play, power play, and then counter play. Like, what are some basic principles for that kind of idea so that there's actually a logical, like, plan behind it? Um, those are some of the things I've been, you know, kind of trying to figure out here. Let me see if I can just heat them up. Are we just going to run the ball? Are we really just going to run stretch with 10 seconds? Call timeout, run it again. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? I just don't. Uh, I just, I just, I just, these, uh, there's just no, like, <laughs> there's just no logic behind it. This is just, now we're in Hail Mary. I mean, I guess there's logic behind that. I think this is decent Hail Mary defense, actually. And you see the screamer against a block running back, by the way. Oh my gosh, I just gave up three. I don't know if he has the kicker to kick it though. So anyway, um, I th I think that that um, that has kind of started to affect how I'm like kind of thinking through. Like for example, let's say you have a let's say you have a money like a money play that you want to run. So it could be double corner, it could be anything really. What you have to ask yourself is. How are they going to stop this? So what are they practically going to... Hey, missed it. Awesome. That's one for the good guys. How, what, what are they practically going to have to do to actually defend you? That's the question you have to ask. And then once you think through that, of those things that they do to stop you, what do they, uh, what do they become vulnerable to now? As I can't pick a play. Awesome. So what, what, do, they, what do they become vulnerable to? So, for example, in, in the case of the double corner out of bunch strong offset, for example, one of the adjustments that I feel like a lot of people have been doing against me when I run that when I run that play is they want to try to put a cloud flat from the safety, or they want to man up the circle receiver or the outside bunch receiver. Those are the two main ones that you see. Okay, so if that's if that's what they do, then the play Durham is a great counterplay to the play corner strike because then now we're able to attack the opposite side of the field with a high low read. And then also they're having two players. It's going to take two to three players to defend that circle receiver on the wheel. And then they're leaving the running back on, uh, open up the, up the vertical. Okay. So that's kind of the idea. So like right here, I think he's kind of showing uh, cover two. Now in this case, uh, another thing that's kind of systematic is generally speaking in Madden, you want to be on a hash mark 
when you're uh, passing. So you see here, now we're on a hash mark. It makes your reads a little bit more systematic, makes it a little bit easier. So he's showing that he's in a cover two coverage. I'm not too worried about that because obviously if you're playing anybody with any skill, um, they can adjust that coverage as well. So that's something that you always have to think of through. As you saw right there, he actually decided that he's going to go user that um, he's going to go user that route. So what we're going to do, because, I, because I'm kind of anticipating cover two, I think he might have just audibled uh, to man coverage. This is one of my favorite plays. If I could get the streak to actually streak. Um, I think this is a super underrated setup here. Yeah, and he's going to go man. So I have the tight end. So, um, yeah. So that's the idea. Is just if this, then that. Now, if we apply that principle to defense, I do think it's a little bit more tricky to do that. And the reason why is because, like I said, defense is so... Um, it's just so much based off of like your opponent and what they practically are doing. Uh, so I think that's something I'm still trying to figure out. Dude, the delay of game stuff, bro. Like uh, the accelerated clock stuff, just it just blows me away that we're still doing that. I don't know if I understand. I just don't understand why. I guess it's realistic. Okay, so for example here, like he's showing cover three. So a lot of people will do this defense to try to stop double corner. They'll put that uh, slot in a cloud. If they put that slot in a cloud, then the wheel route should be open to the left side. There you see, wheel route open left side. And then, so that's the idea. So it's if this, then that. And and um, one of the things that I'm trying to get better at is my pre-snap planning. Um, I think it's another thing that I just struggle with as a Madden player is I just kind of, and I've always done this, and, and, and I, I just think it's always been a development piece for me. And I think it's a development piece for a lot of people is you run your plan, but you don't really like, you don't really, like you run your plays and you have good plays, but they, you don't actually like have a plan or system for why you're running that play. I've, I've thought about this a lot. I've thought about this for years. It's like, why do I pick verticals versus double post? Is it just because I'm just kind of doing random stuff? Because I think most people are. Um, I think it needs to be like, no, there's actually a reason behind it. It's based off what he's doing and, and that kind of thing. So that's kind of what I've been working on. Uh, defensively, like I said, I think it's a little harder. I think it's like, I think it kind of goes like this defensively. You have your base defense, so it could be cover four. It could be, it could be anything. Okay. Uh, in Madden, I think generally speaking, it's some type of pressure plan, but, uh, you have like kind of your base, uh, system or your base coverage that you want to play. And that if you like, if you could play this coverage all game, you would be perfectly happy to do that. Um, and then from there, you adapt that based off of like the formation they're running, all of that stuff. So like right here, you know, we're going to do this kind of defense. I really like this defense here. Let's see how it plays cross man. That should have been a pick. <sighs> and this is like just a perfect freaking example of what I'm talking about. Look at this. Okay, so he's just running his cycling through his plays, right? He went deuce close bench, no adjustments. Now we're running verticals, no adjustments. This guy could be a coin bot. I literally could be getting freaking taken down by a coin bot. Look at this. So I, I got a user this crosser, which I'm kind of trying to go do. But I was like kind of looking at that running back. It's like, oh, he might throw the running back. I got this cross man. Like he just snap throws this. And it's just touchdown. <laughs> uh, it's just frustrating. By the way, this is my favorite goal line defense right now. Of course, I say that I give it up. I got to move that guy out. 60 out jacks is pretty good in the goal line. Uh, you just pinch your defensive line. I think you spread your linebackers. and You basically create. What that does is it creates a look that um, is really helpful in the goal line where, number one, it can stop QB sneak. It can stop all the interior runs, right? But the thing that's really, uh, the thing that's really powerful about that defense is, is that you can actually um, stop RPOs with it, and it creates almost like a goal line six one type of look, uh, just in terms of the way you can get the shed. So if they're in a passing threat, if you just crash, if you pinch your D line and crash down, just like you would in six one, um, it creates this really really threatening uh, defense. So, a little fun fact for you. All right, so you should be using the slot. I actually had the tight end. Okay, so you see what he's see what I was saying? He's kind of going to that cover three now. So now I could go to this, uh, this verticals play where I'm going to put the running back right at the seam area. It's going to be a little bit easier to throw that than the tight end. You see here, and of course he actually goes to man coverage, busts the coverage over the top. 
And we're able just to throw this. Let's see if we can outrun him. Yep. Somehow we're winning this game. <laughs> I think it, I honestly think is that that pick really did change the game. My man Roquan Smith coming up with a big play. Lurk Artist is the Lurk Artist in the best ability in the game, but it's it's like top two. Deep like set feet lead, deep out zone KO, Lurk Artist, and mid zone KO. Those are the best abilities in this game. By far. Mid zone KO is good. Um, I think mid zone KO is largely under misunderstood of what it actually like does. And if you could get mid zone KO on all of your like on your safeties and on your corners, that is like ideal. Um, because then you're that will they will knock out stuff in the middle of the field as well. So now we're cycling to normal Y off week. Let's see if we can cover it. This should be good. I don't know why this defense isn't let's shade out, shade underneath three cloud. So um like this dude is just dude. <laughs> oh, now we're no huddling out of that. Oh, it's just like, what are we doing, buddy? We're out here running halfback draw. Look at this blitz just bag and throw it. Throw it. Oh, he threw that. Dude, he is 13 of 15. Dude, it's just it might be time. It might be time. I'm running quick slants. Oh, look at the blitz though. Look at the blitz just bagging him. This should be D. This should be D. Yeah, yeah. Nope, 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 nope. There it is. All right. Got that done. Um I I don't know why he was running some of the things he's running. Like I said, it's just I I just want to be more systematic. That's my goal. That's my New Year's resolution. That's my Madden resolution. That's my resolution. I want to be more systematic. I want to be more strategic. I want to be more intentional with my offense and defense in Madden. And um, I want to actually have, like, by the end of this year, I want to be able to actually teach, like, a logical, um, this is a good system for defense. This is a good system for offense. And actually explain not just the play setups, but the why behind when we do what we do. I think that right there, why you do what you do when you do it. Um, I think that is good. That is a really underrated uh, part of Madden and it really doesn't get talked about a lot. And yeah, wanted to do some content on that. So I might do some more gameplays on the channel. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Let me know if you guys like that. Um, I really like doing longer videos. I think you guys have been enjoying that. I've done some like full uh, offensive and defensive schemes for you guys. So let me know uh, if you guys like that kind of content. But as you can see, this is a first game post patch. The blitz still works. We have a different way to run it than what we have been doing. And if you want to, you want to learn that. That's in the ebook. Already updated it for our Patreon members. But really, overall, guys, like, like I said, I just think having a system. And and in Madden, if you think about it, there's the other thing that's interesting about all this is. Um, Oh, gosh, I'm going to get dotted here. Yeah, we're doing this. Oh, my gosh. I just don't like just, ah, it's just like, what? What? We're now in this, and we're doing this, and I just, this is, this is like perfect, because this guy literally doesn't have a system. Like, he's just running plays. Um, you know, it's like, I like this money play, so I'm going to run this money play, and, and, and there's no, like, he doesn't care what I'm doing. He has no, like, you know, this is, the, uh, you know, oh, he's doing this, so I need to do this. There's, there's none of that. Um, now we're in this, you know, so we're going to run stretch. Like, I, I just don't, I just, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. It's working. <laughs> um, it's working. So, okay. So anyways, um, yeah, everything's updated in the ebook. Uh, in the ebooks on the Patreon. I think the Patreon really is the best value that you can get in the Madden space. It's got 18 offensive and defensive ebooks. We update it all the time. And um, yeah, I think it's, I, I really like where it's going. I feel like it's getting better every single year. Uh, I feel like it, it definitely is. I'm getting better at teaching it. And um, I think people are enjoying more. So let's see if he, he's going to run the ball down 10 or is he going to, yep, he is. Okay. I didn't think he would run the ball down 10. He can't stop me. So, Interesting. All right, here. This might be bad. Yeah, I got messed up. Dude, we're just doing this stuff now. Like, this is why DB Fire 2 was so good for this kind of stuff. 
because DB fire two, you would actually be able to stop the run, which I'm going to go to here. I know I'm not user on the right guy. That's what it is. I'm just kind of messing around with the blitzes, honestly. I don't really care too much about the run D, which maybe I should. Maybe I'd be less upset. Nope. Look at him carry me for a yard. Look at Josh Jacobs just carry me. All right, we're going to go to this now. Probably run left. Yes, big Jalen Carter. Nice job, buddy. Make him earn it. Yep, GG's. And there it is, boys, and there it is. So, yeah, anyways, that's what I want to get better at. I want to get better at being a systematic player. I feel like it suits my style more. I'm pretty systematic in real life. I want to be more systematic in real life. I want to be more systematic about everything. I just think that it's that, like, that is uh, one of the big things uh, to me is, like, you actually have, like, some in systematic intentionality, all those things. And I love creating systems, and I love, like, uh, I love doing that, so... Uh, trying to kind of wrestle with that a little bit more. I just think it'd be helpful for, honestly, my Madden game. I don't know if it'd be helpful for yours. Probably would be. Uh, like I said, I, I've been doing this for a really long time. And it's kind of been the same thing since I started, is that people really struggle. Uh, where people really get messed up in Madden, and really I think one of the biggest skill gaps is the players that really understand, like, why they're doing what they're doing, they really, they, they're better off. Um, and there's, in my opinion, there's actually levels to that. Like, um, like there's, uh, like, like there's the beginning understanding of like why you do what you do. And then there's like a little bit higher of a level of understanding as well with that. So, I uh, also think that plays a little bit of a role too. So anyway, just, you know, kind of like deep talks with Cody here, but, um, let me see if I can throw this cause he doesn't have lurk artists. Yep. So Yeah. That's some of the things that I want to do. If you guys have any tips or tricks for that, I'd love to hear your advice. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'm um, trying to be more intentional with my, sh with my weight lifting too and training and all that fun stuff. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this showed off the blitz. And, uh, yep, yeah, thanks for watching. Ebooks are in the description.